So I'm going to start this next video with an apology to all of you people who have subscribed because I have totally dropped the ball on creating uh, new content and putting something else out there for you to watch. But there's lots of reasons why. Uh, the boat's had its issues. Um, it's been to a boatyard and had a new generator put in. It's had some welding done on it. And I've, I've had my own uh, things going on. I, I've had a, a lawsuit against the state of New Jersey. Uh, I, yeah, I sued the state of New Jersey. And um, I'm now the executor of two wills. And uh, there's a lot of legal crap going on there. Well, there's a saying, uh, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> but I got a question for you. What is the most expensive cable channel on TV? People might say, oh, uh, wait, it's Netflix, Disney, HBO. No, it's HGTV you know, house and garden television. So far, it's cost me, I think about $50,000 because my wife doesn't like the tile. And so I'm now demolishing what I thought was a perfectly good bathroom. And um, I'm gonna have to rip all this out and it's gonna be quartz instead. So I'm gonna take the woodworking off the front here uh, I already smashed the sink into pieces and I'll save the plumbing because there's nothing wrong with that and I already put these taps in and stuff and I have to dismantle everything else and then redo the whole thing uh, so I'll, I'll show you the end product uh, it'll be done in three or four weeks what about a happy husband? When does that happen? So it was a big day today, but the welding uh, up on the top deck is finished. Um, the welder will be coming back tomorrow um, and he'll be completing the welding on the outriggers. And then finally, all the way up there, they're going to move that bracket from the outrigger and they're going to bring it down about three feet so that it's below the cross tree and then they're going to take the cross tree off and remake it out of aluminum so I don't have to refinish it. Now during all this period of time remember there was like green tile in the bathrooms, the heads? Well it's all been redone and it is now uh, this absolutely beautiful quartz with a uh, new sink. I uh, put a new faucet in there because uh, there wasn't enough space for the old one. And this is spectacular. And because Lisa's in charge, of the decor. I did exactly the same thing in the forward head. So same quartz, a really magnificent installation, I gotta say. Use a local company, five star granite and marble, and they just made it absolutely beautiful. Uh, we put in new sinks as well. They're all deeper. The old ones uh, were like uh, countertop. These are set underneath. So that's good. And I'm not sure about this yet. Uh, time will tell. The old ones, they used to have like a fiddle of wood on the edge so things don't slide off. This doesn't have that. Uh, it's a cleaner look. Uh, it's less semen-like because things are going to slide off. But uh, I guess that means you don't put things on there. And it'll keep everything nice and tidy. So uh, it'll force people to put things away and not leave them lying around. Down here in the engine room for the generator, the wiring is mostly complete. 
I don't know whether we need this. I'm not quite sure what that's for. But the other wires there are all hooked up and we're looking good. Uh, it appears as though they've got most of it hooked up, but they haven't got the fuel system sorted out yet. And down there, there's a, a plug that drains the oil and they don't have that hooked up yet. Then other stuff <coughs> near, out near the front of the engine. We've got some plumbing here to do. This pipe is uh, the uh, raw water inlet and it's got to go to uh, this little spigot here. However, they need an elbow joint to get that. And then, oh, let me focus on that. This guy, that's the anti-siphon valve. And that was causing the failure of the last generator. So a $10 part caused $8,000 worth of damage. <laughs> so that's got to go. As you can see here, the workers have put down all of this uh, flooring material to protect the finish of the woodwork. But there's even more work going on. Uh, this is a welder. This is all their equipment up here. I'm up on the flybridge right now. And I'm just going to step back a little so you can see what we've been doing is adding this extra railing all the way around the flybridge uh, because we want to put canvas work around here. And the only way that we can truly do that is uh, if we can stretch it in all four directions. So they added an extra upright bar right here to strengthen this. Uh, didn't do it on the other side yet. I'm not sure if they're going to. Um, and then I'm going to have to get all this painted and refinished when they've uh, finished doing their welding. So I'm on board Savage. Um, I've just been doing some work and there's something very interesting going on right now because the yard, they're launching another boat and I'm sort of in the way and they're going to take this boat right over the top of me and I hope they get it right because I'm literally right underneath them this is my aft deck and I mean these guys are good but <laughs> this is uh, scary stuff God, everything is so close. The mizzen mast is close to the crane. The mizzen boom is uh, about two and a half feet away. I'm not sure if they're moving it to launch it or just rotating it to put it somewhere else. Let me move over a bit so you can see better. Ah. Maybe they're just gonna rotate the entire boat and then swing it over the top of me nose first. Looking at it down here in the engine room, uh, this new generator is actually quite a bit smaller than the one that came out. This is a 7.6 kilowatt generator. The one that came out was 12.5. Um, the reasons for going smaller is because um, we want to be able to run it more often so that we can uh, have AC and uh, do cooking. But we, we have four air conditioners on the boat. We've learned that because we're in the Northeast, not Florida. We really don't need to be running all four air conditioners. Maybe we'll run one at a time. And so a smaller generator will use less fuel. And uh, that means we can run it for uh, longer uh, for the same amount of fuel. Okay, they're, they're lowering the boat slightly now, but they're still right over the top of me. I think they're having to lower it so that they don't hit the crane. 
right at the masthead. This is life on land. I'm stuck in traffic. It's rush hour. And I can't wait until I live on a boat full time because I'm just done with the rat race. This is no way to live my life. I did a calculation recently. If I've got 20 good years left, 24 hours a day, 365 in a year, I have about 175,000 hours of good stuff going on. And I don't want to spend it in traffic. We added these brackets at the back here with a pole on it and that is going to help us secure canvas work for a nice canopy. And I've got to... Well, it's winter, it's December and um, we're in the water for this winter and I want to get an extra dock line on the boat but it's so damn cold outside. God knows how many degrees below freezing. Uh, I think it's like around zero Fahrenheit and I don't know what that is in centigrade. But I want to get a dock line to bring us closer to the dock and I've got it right here but it was outside hanging up and the thing is literally frozen solid. <laughs> so it's not much of a dock line. I don't know what you'd call it. So I turned the stove on and I'm gonna put this on top of the stove and hopefully defrost it so I can use it. 